Hello, my dear friends. How are you tonight? It is so good to see you. So, tonight, the first thing I'll talk about is I want to take a little bit of a Christmas break. So, um, but we'll still have, you know, our Sunday shows and our gypsies. But let me look at the calendar. It's so good to see all of you. I'm going to look at the calendar before I forget. Next Thursday night is the 23rd. I, for one, will be running around the house trying to get it clean for company on the 26th. My grandsons are coming up. I guess, yeah, I see, I'll see them 26th or 27th. So, I think we should take a break for the next two weeks, okay? That will put our next art quilt Thursday on January the 6th, okay? And that'll give us maybe two Thursdays before I head to the Myrtle Beach quilt party. So I'll be off that week, but I'll remind you later on. So anyway, we're, I'm still doing my Sundays, my Monday one, my Jitsi, I mean on Monday. Yes, I'm doing the next two, so I'm, I'm, I am not taking time off for um, my Sundays at all. I'll be here until I go to the Myrtle Beach quilt party. So I'm excited about that. But I have, I think I've decided what I want to work on for our next art quilt. And what I think we're going to do is I'm going to draw a design and then quilt it, and then I'm going to work with maybe metallic paints and paint it. So I think that would be a lot of fun. I love what Lisa Capen is doing with the painting, and um, this is going to be different from that in that we'll do about that big and do a painted design, but I want to do something really, really dramatic. So if you want to piece it and then save a part that you paint, but be thinking you'll have two good weeks or more. Be thinking about, is there a design you've seen or you would like to try that we can then do some painting? Because I've been watching Miss Lisa. I can't wait to join in on that as soon as I have a moment where I'm not rushing around. But anyway, so be thinking about that. And if you have got, you can use acrylic paints. It would be really good to have aloe gel or, um, in fact, I heard Lisa Capen talking about even liquid starch you can use as an extender. I think she said it's not as smooth, but this is going to be for a smallish art quilt. It's not going to get washed. It, you, it doesn't matter if it's smooth or supple or anything. That's, that's not the problem. So be looking in the next couple of weeks and look for a design that you think you would. And what we're going to do first, is we're going to draw our design on a well-washed white or muslin piece of fabric, well-washed because you want every chance for your paints to sink in to the fabric so that they're, um, then you can press them with a pressing cloth and they should be then color fast. So don't forget that. Hello, Diane57. I'm going to have to look and see who's here. I haven't seen Diane 57 in a while. It is great to see you, hon. So anyway, but I think I'm going to do something really, really nondescript. I don't know. We'll see. But as usual, if I come up with some ideas, I'll draw the patterns and have them so that it, if you're the kind of person that goes, look, It'll be just after the holidays. I can't handle being creative and thinking of a design just after the holidays. So don't worry. I'll look at what I've got. You could also pick a page out of a coloring book or look online for free coloring pages. See something you like 
And then what we're going to do is I'm going to take a permanent pen because I'm going to want things outlined anyway. I'm going to draw the design on my fabric with permanent pen. Then I'm going to take black thread and I'm going to outline stitch. I'm going to put the layers, the top fabric, the batting, and the backing. And then I'm going to outline the drawing. Then from then, I have to have that the first night ready so that I can show you how you're going to paint it. And uh, I know a couple years ago, we did a sun and moon, but I've gotten a lot better now and I can't wait. You know, I've got a little experience under my belt. So that's going to be our next project. And then after that one, I'm going to let you vote on what you would like to do for the one after that. All right. So tonight, well, first, let me see who's here. Let me see. Oops. Better clean off the glasses. Goodness gracious, I got a mess on these things. All right. Let's see. All righty. All right, let's see who is here. I was getting ready, and I saw Marsha pop up first thing. Way to go, Marsha. Hello, Miss Mary. Polly, hi, sweetie. Uh, look, I love seeing y'all chat. That's when Charlene Piper is here. Hi, sweetie. And Cheryl Hogan. Oh, it's so good to see all of you. Edwinice is here. So good to see all of you. Jeannie is here. Yay! All right. You watch later. Good to see you, Jeannie, hon. And there's Debbie. Debbie, you're never late. Never late here. You're always welcome. Never, never late. All right. So let me show you. I worked on this thing for four hours, five hours at least. So. I think I've got the fabric in place. And I started to do the thread painting with that woolly thread that I'm excited about. I, dear ladies, I'm tired. I'm tired of messing with this. And I think what makes me more tired of it is I'm so busy trying to get ready for Christmas. So let me move back a little. Here is, here it is. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of thread painting. And then, don't let me forget to put on my giraffe and my acacia tree, my, my African umbrella tree. So, but I think it's looking pretty good. And you know what? I think I'm going to go with this. I have to be honest. I absolutely love the bars along the edge. And I know that I took it off the center because having the sun rays go up looked a whole lot more natural. And um, hold on. I didn't, I didn't iron it all down yet. And where I glued it, it stuck pretty good. But where I used the fusible, it really needs a good pressing down. But sometimes with these art quilts, you can fiddle with them to death. And I don't want to do that. There are too many quilts in me and too little time. So I am ready to put a period on this one and call it done. So, all right, I think I got everything ironed down. All right, let me show you what. So what I did is I got this to where I can live with it. Is it perfect? No. Do I care right now? No. <laughs> and uh, I like how I faded up into the purple and blue up here. Remember, this, this challenge was let's do something unusual and different with the background. Let us use our eyes to do the blending of the colors to make the scenery make sense. And that's what we've done. Oh, thank you. You guys are so nice. And now I think it goes better with what I've done below. Okay. 
So I'm going to show you some basic thread painting. And then I'm going to show you to do some ink tense painting on it to bring out things about it. I'm hoping I, yep, I left my original down here. And what someone asked, what is woolly thread? I've got some right here to show you. And this is a woolly, they're called woolly nylon. And let me, <laughs> this, I kind of pulled it off the machine real fast and it kind of got, but do you see, do you see how it's lumpy and thick? Can you see this? It's not, here is typical thread and there it is. See that? Oh, and somebody wanted a pattern for a giraffe. Oh, you might have to email me. I think I forgot now who it was, and I'll be glad to draw you one and email it to you. But do you see the difference between the woolly nylon and the regular thread? Now, when you talk about bobbin threading, you can take and wind this or yarn or whatever, wind it on the bobbin, put it in the bobbin, and then you have to turn your work upside down because the bobbin stitches show on the on the underside of what you're sewing. So you have to do it upside down. Isn't it neat? These are good threads when you want to do thread painting and you want to cover some area. Here, let me show you some of the grasses I've already done. Do you see them here? They show, hi, Laura, so good to see you, Lisa, Cape, and Quilt. Oh, you know, I got lucky. I was given about three or four spools of this long ago, and I thought, what am I going to do with this? Well, now I love thread painting. Lisa, um, I was so tickled to hear you talk about my candle during your Friday show, and I watched the whole show. So here, oops, my my holly's a little limp. I need to get fake holly because this real stuff just will start to fall apart. But this Lisa talked about my candle, and I was so touched. I was really honored. But this was so much fun to do, and taking a Phillips head screwdriver and drawing. I mean, scoring the lines in it and then using three types of acrylic paint to wipe off and wipe on and so, and then taking some of the dark to make sure it stayed. This, I just took and stabbed the candle with the um, screwdriver to make it look like it was a healed place where the old the, the stem had been. So if I lived near you, Miss Lisa, I would give this to you, sweetie. And if I were coming to the mid-Atlantic quilt show, I'd give it to you, but I'm a little nervous, uh, even though I've had my booster uh, three shots now, I'm a little nervous about getting in large groups. I'm going to the Myrtle Beach quilt show, but that is more controlled, and they have taken measures to help protect us. Like, instead of going from class to class, we're taking one three-day class. We have to wear our mask unless we're sit sitted seated um, at our assigned seats and the tables are going to be moved away from each other. I'm hoping they give us more space to work. But anyway, thank you, Miss Lisa, for your kind comments on that. I love, love, love it. Oh, and I don't know if you saw, but I'm not a big fan of this. I made it because I wanted to try it. Next time, hot glue and unmelted mints, and I'll try it again. <laughs> So, okay. Well, and right after we got off Sunday show, I found the one Zentangle star that I lost before I got to show you. It was a lot of work. Eh, doesn't really do anything for me, but I made it. All right. I'll give it to a grandchild. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, my holly is falling. And just to let you know, if you use real holly berries when you're doing your other kind of candle, the hot wax you put on them turns them brown. They're not quite as pretty. 
So, but anyway, I tried it. I tried it. All right. So now, and I was telling them, Miss Lisa, I don't know if you heard that for our next, we're going to take two weeks off. Then for our next, and that's just for the Thursday night. Then for the next Art Quilt Thursday, we are going to try, we're going to do, find a drawing from a coloring book or something you draw, something you think would be really cool. Make it about like this. And we're going to draw it on well-washed or prepared for dyed fabric, white or muslin. And it, all you have to do is just wash it real good to get out any sizing and chemicals on it. Make sure you dry it and iron it good. And then we're going to use permanent pens to draw our design on it. Then we're going to take and put batting and backing, and we're going to outline quilt. We're going to outline quilt it. Now, you're going to have to... I would use safety pen, pen based it, whatever. And then once we outline quilt it, we're going to use paints. I have been loving watching Miss Lisa paint. I tell you, it is good for your blood pressure. <laughs> it calms you right down. And I said, okay. And she mentioned somebody was using metallic paints. And I said, I have some. I have some of the Lumiere. Oh, by Jacquard. And I have some of the metallic paints. And so I think I'm going to use metallics. But anyway, and Miss Lisa, I might be going on Etsy and trying to say, can I come watch y'all paint? <laughs> so I have been downloading the patterns, but I haven't gotten ready to paint them yet. But if you would love to watch. Oh, Dolores. Hi, sweetie. If you would love to see a gorgeous project coming together. Go visit Lisa Cape and Quilts. If you, she does live Fridays on them, but it's okay if you've missed any, they're still on YouTube. And free patterns, she's so generous. So, okay. You loved watching her paint? Uh, yes. <laughs> it's amazing. And I love, you know what I love? I love how, It'll get a little thin in a place, and she just carefully and patiently just runs that brush across until it's all equal thickness. And it's just so mesmerizing. And I found myself, I, how long was your show, Lisa? It was like an hour and a half, two hours, and I watched the whole thing. <laughs> so anyway, so I watched three of them. Uh, the first two, I can't say I watched all the way to the end, but the number three, I did. So, I would I would have such fun joining a Zoom with you guys. So, that would be so much fun. And then I could learn something, because Miss Lisa is very successful. She's got a ton of subscribers and a ton of, of viewers, and She's got a real website, a real Etsy page with real patterns and all kinds of things on it. So she's the real deal. All right. So now I'm going to show you. I'm going to try to set up my machine and do just a little bit of stitching. What I'm going to do is you notice I've put black along the bottom. And in the, in the images that I used as my inspiration... Um, they were almost all black, but because it was going to be the sunset was so bright that the color just left everything. And I didn't want that much black in it. And so I tried using very dark colors and striations and then came along and anywhere I pretended that the land kind of had a rise in it that would catch some of the sunset. I did that. But what I'm doing now, for right now, the grasses I'm putting in are coming from the top of this very dark area. So it's going to be like, I want you to be thinking you're in on the African safari and there's this rise that you're kind of just behind the rise and then the big tall grasses and things from the savanna pop up from that. And I, that is going to give, I hope, a sense of depth and Oh, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, that would be great to use all those ties. So, cranberries in my candles. I haven't tried that yet. 
I tell you what, though, I'm becoming more and more of a fan of artificial greenery. So, okay, let me get this. I've got to... Mark said, do you want help coming downstairs? And I said, sure. And I handed him my bag and then went to walk away. And he said, honey, there's thread. You're connected to thread. And I had a bobbin. Now, the bobbin is just laying in the basket. What makes it jump up and unwind? That's what I want to know. <laughs> because that's what it did. And I mean, we were like, where is this? It was black thread. And trying to figure it out, it was just crazy. So anyway, but I, you know, with a bobbin, I, I don't know what y'all use to keep bobbins from running, but I use those little hair scrunchies you can get like from Walmart, although I've got to get some more. But I didn't have them on these. And those, those threads, I swear, it's like... Toy Story. When you're not looking, they jump up and unwind. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure of it. I'm going to go ahead and use some of the woolly nylon. And let me... I wish my, my new machine's upstairs. And I didn't want to bring it down. So let's see what... I've got my black thread in... My black thread bobbin in here. Come on, Deb. Okay. All right. So I'm put this on real quick. And I'm so glad. The one thing I'm going to miss when I sell this um, Elna is it does have the upright spool delivery. So for something like this woolly nylon, it just makes it that much easier. Okay. All right, I haven't sewn on this machine in a while, so pardon my lack of sewing machine housekeeping. So how is everyone doing getting ready for Christmas? I um, We got our last of our presents in today, and I'm getting overwhelmed because Christmas is in a week and a half, and not even a week and a half, and oh my goodness. And the worst part is, does anybody here like cleaning house? Oh, thank you, Miss Laura. I would appreciate a thumbs up. Thank you. All right. In fact, Laura, would you be interested in being a Thursday night moderator? I am in the market for some moderating. All right. So now I'm going to see. Let me tilt this down. Whoa, this could be really interesting. <laughs> All right. Boy, Lisa's got a great camera set up. And she uses fancy software and has really great overhead. What type of needle for the woolly nylon? I would use, anytime I use a decorative thread or metallic thread, I use a top stitch big needle. And I didn't say, so thank you. Did you see how nicely she said that? <laughs> I hadn't said it, but I have some, um, well, this, that, no, this is a different kind of needle. Let me see if, here they are. Top stitch, this happens to be a superior. Top stitch, 100 slash 16. And top stitch just because it has a very long thread path. And for unusual threads. Oh, Debbie, you made your swirl tree. Yay! But it has a long indentated um, thread path. So it helps protect and keep your threads from breaking. There. Yeah. So, okay. So now get this under here. And I wonder, I might, since I, these stitches still don't show up that well, I think I'm going to try a zigzag stitch. And I'm going to try it on a pretty narrow setting. Let's try a 1.8. 
But I'm going to try reasonably big stitch length of 22. Let's see what that's going to look like. Okay, and I have black thread, regular thread in the bobbin. And the woolly nylon, whoops, my foot pedal's not on. Okay, here we go. Now, let's see what this looks like. You, this is a good place to use different decorative stitches, too. Because, you know, there are some stitches that go like this and then come partway back and go further and partway. And that would be a really good stitch. What I'm trying to do is just make the grass easier to show up. So I'm going to do this. Let me go back and forth just a little. I like to leave my feed dogs down because when I do, it gives me some resistance and I feel like I have more control. And let, oh, let me get the light on over here. All right. So here it is, but the zigzag shows pretty good. So I'm going to lower that zigzag down to 1.4. And then I'm going to come back. I think I'm going to lower my stitch length to 2.0. And let's see now. I'm going to come right back over the same path. And let's see how this looks. All right. Let me take this out and show you. There, there is some of the grass. And if you notice how tall I'm making it, because it's supposed you're I'm pretending that that you're down here looking through the tall grass to see the giraffe that we're gonna put in and the tree. And so you're kind of a little bit hidden. Now I'm making I don't know exactly what kind of grass I'm making. I'm thinking I'm making it up as I go along, people. So <laughs> I'm just making a thicker end as if it's some kind of seed grass. Uh, oh, that looks much better. Now, I had done I had done the straight line stitching right here. But look, now I went back over a straight line stitching with the zigzag. I think that looks good. Okay. Now, and don't forget if I'm I love you chatting. Um, if you want to get my attention, type in all caps because, you know, my eyes are getting kind of old. <laughs> and that'll help me. Um, it'll help me see that you've written something that you want me to notice. Okay. Now let's see. Yeah, these are looking really good. Now let me do this. Whoops. See, what, see how it's going? And I'm just doing this in dark because I'm assuming it's like a silhouette. Okay, so let me do a little bit more of this because I also want to show you the ink tints. And, and I don't know if you need me to show you how to use the invisible thread. Shoot, I'm not sure. I have the smoky down here. I think I left it up in my room. Normally, I do thread painting upstairs in my frame room. And this, I definitely would want to use smoky, the smoky kind of thread. But let me do a little bit more of this because I'm really loving how this is coming out. I mean, isn't that cool? That looks really easy. And I love the fact that it is just a dark color. I'm going to cross these over. All right. Now let me cut that. Oh, that's great. See how you, it's really good to give it a little reference. And uh, I think it's looking really, really good. Also, remind me, I want to write Pat Fry and make sure she's okay. Because I haven't heard, I haven't seen her message on the group for a bit. All right, so here's this one. But see how easy? And do you see that the woolly nylon really gives it a presence? So, and I'm not going to, I'm going to be doing a little thread painting to look 
to look a little unusual. But I'm not... Um, I am excited about doing quilting and doing undulating lines to kind of give you the idea of the savanna and the sun beating down. And All right. This one... I'm going to come up this way because I want to do crossing again. That was fun. So I'm going to thicken the top. All right. And you notice I could pull it backwards, but I don't, I worry that I would lose sight of where I am and I don't want to mess it up. So it's just easier to cut the thread, start back from the beginning. Another thing to remember, please, is don't go too fast when you're doing thread painting. I'm the world's worst at being very impatient. Not sure if that thread would work in your machine. Okay, I'll show you what you would do then. When we're done, when I'm done with a couple more of these, I'll show you about bobbin work. Well, I probably could do that now. Okay, so see, I did another crossover. And I love the fact that this fabric has kind of a worn look, which is perfect for what you think of a hot, dry savanna. So, okay. So now let's say you don't think your machine would appreciate this woolly nylon. What I'm going to do then is take the thread off the machine. Um, take the thread off the machine and you have to wind it by hand if, because if it's too thick to go through the needle then it's too thick to try to wind on the machine and so you wind it by hand and you can go up to a pretty thick yarn with this believe it or not so you wind the thread on the bobbin Okay, let me wind a little bit more so because I'm going to actually do this and let you see. Oh, you're sweetheart. Okay, now here we go. I think that's pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is take this off and instead uh, on the top, I'm just going to put a good general all purpose black sewing thread. And, whoops, let me make sure, let me get this set up really fast. So it's like you're doing opposite. Now, the part that I have had trouble with, how did a tissue get under that? Um, the part, the trouble that I have had doing bobbin work is knowing where to sew on the top. All right, I'm taking out the black bobbin thread, um, black, black bobbin that I had in there, and I'm going to get ready and put the woolly nylon in. And just be gentle with it because the woolly nylon is not nearly, it's not nearly as strong as your regular bobbin thread. Okay, now normally you don't have to pull up this bobbin, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to use the hand wheel and carefully pull up the bobbin thread because I know it's thicker than the normal. It's thicker than the normal bobbin thread. And whoops. So here it is coming from the bobbin. And the regular thread coming from the top. I'm going to take them both, put them under my foot. Now, then I'm going to take this and, oops, it's in my pocket. Let me get this out of my pocket. What I'm going to do is draw the pattern here because I've got to sew from the back. So I'm going to say, okay. Here is the top of that black fabric. I'm going to come up here and go like this. And here and go over here. 
Okay, so I draw it, I look at the side, make sure you can even measure, like start this far, measure how far from the top and bottom, and draw my pattern on the back. Then I just put this under this way, leave it on the same style stitching. Although, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm going to leave it on the same. I was trying to think. Okay, let me see if it's going to work. I heard something that made it sound like it caught, so we'll see. All right. And then I'm going to go back and forth. Okay, then I'm going to cut it. And let's see. It, it sounded like it caught. Okay, it made a little bit of a bird's nest, but then it straightened out, so I'm not going to worry. I'll cut the bird's nest away later. So now I move over to this one, and I'm going to get ready and sew this one. And this is how you do bobbin work. The main thing is you have to know where to sew the pattern, and you have to hand wind your bobbin with whatever different, uh, decorative yarns or threads that you want to put on. And that's really wonderful because then you can use some really interesting. Now, these are the two stems I just put on. So we'll turn this over, and there it is. And if you notice, it looks very similar. It looks very similar to the others. So here is where it got a little bit of a bird's nest when it first started, but then you'll notice it straightened out normally. So I'll just carefully nip this off. And when I have to nip off a bird's nest like that, since you're not sure where the threads are, that's when I like to come in with fray check and put fray check down to make sure it stays. So that is bobbin work. And I will do it again, I know, because I'll do it with a kind of nubbier, thicker yarn, something that you can really see good. But I think I prefer to do it the normal way, but this is if your machine will not take the woolly nylon through the needle. This is how you do that. Okay? And if you are going to be a quilt embellisher, and if you're going to be a thread painter, bobbin work is really, really an important skill. Because, well, we're a little crooked. <laughs> but bobbin work is, is an important skill to learn because you'll be able to do some fabulous things. I don't know why this... I don't know why after I loosen it. All right, so now... And I am going to, oh, let me show you some of my threads that I have. Because I'm not sure where I might, I might accentuate different lines on the quilt. I might do a little thread work, bobbin work on the grasses near the pond. So let me bring this back down again and show you some of the threads I've chosen. I'm not going to have a lot of shadow threads. Like normally when I do thread painting, I cover the gamut between the lightest light and the darkest dark. And I'm, oh, I might even put some metallic in the sun. I, I'm definitely going to do that. I think that'd be so pretty. But I've got a bunch of different colors. And you'll notice not too much in the light tones because this, for the most part, is done in silhouette. Okay? Then here is the um, invisible thread. And unfortunately, I only have this down here. I don't have my smoky invisible thread. And I, I would use this invisible thread to stitch the sun, the sun rays. But when it comes to the rest of the quilt, I'm going to get a smoky thread. 
So those are the threads I'm going to work on. And, you know, one of the problems is I'm always working at the last minute and trying to get ready for the show. And I've got a few of these that I haven't finished. And I like them all. And I, I want to finish them. So we're going to take some time at some point during the year and try to have some gypsies where we finish our projects. So we'll work on that. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and come over here and iron on the giraffe. And I was going to do the only reason I don't have them ironed on yet is because I was going to do the, I'm sorry about this. I was going to do the invisible stitching, but, um, hold on. Okay, I was going to do the invisible stitching, but the problem with that is I didn't have, I, I, it would take too long. I What it means is if I put the applique on top, it would be easier just to go across the whole thing, you know, do it all at once. I'm going to have to stop and start around the tree and the giraffe. That's not that big of a deal, and it's too much fun to get the gratification of finally having the giraffe and the African acacia tree just where I want them. All right, so let me, you, can you use embroidery floss? Absolutely you can. You can use just about anything if you do the bobbin quilting method. You sure can, but I'm gonna, have to. Yeah, this is definitely going to require, since some of this is fused down and some of this is glued down, it's definitely going to require my getting the smoky colored invisible thread. And you know I like polyester rather than nylon, just because nylon stretches and can kind of snap back. So here is my and whoever wanted that giraffe please let me know who it was again and I will make you I will make you a giraffe and um, but I'm gonna take off the back of the fusible so I'm ready to place him and then I love this tree love 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 this tree and I tell you be careful one of my biggest problems when I'm working like this, especially when I go upstairs and come downstairs, I if you notice the pins on here, I pinned it to the quilt because I didn't want to lose it. Where do you get the woolly nylon thread? Oh, you're welcome. Um, you're welcome, sweetie. You can, anywhere you buy thread, they should have some woolly nylon thread. And it's not always wool. It's called woolly because, you know, it looks fluffy. But you can, just in, just about anywhere they sell thread, just ask them where their woolly nylons are. And there's also another kind of thread that I was sharing with a woman um, at my re recent retreat. And it's called Filane. F-I-L-A-I-N-E. And I'm going to soon, when I get back to working on my tiger, I'm going to show you how to use that thread because that's fascinating. It looks a little bit like a woolly nylon, but then once you've sewn it, like just regular sewing stitches, you can take a little metal brush and brush it, and it turns into fur. It is fascinating so we'll be doing that before too long and on our art quilt thursdays this is not this piece of paper is stuck and i don't know why let me put my glasses on so i can see i need this fusible over the whole thing and i don't know why some little pieces of paper get difficult come on come on well, I guess I will be stitching it down because that's ridiculous. All right. So now I'm peeling the paper. And, and this is the thing I like about Steam Seam 2 light is 
you can draw on the paper and you still have paper left till you're ready to put it down. And I am not going to press it until I'm sure I've got it right in place. Now, it's kind of funny to work so hard on this and then cover it with a tree. But what's a girl supposed to do? So, and you notice that the sunset is to the left and these are going to be to the right. What you don't want is everything lined up in the middle. In fact, the rule of thirds is a really good rule to help you in placement where everything... You know, don't put anything right in the middle, thirds, thirds, you know, that works really well. Now, one thing I saw, some one of y'all, I think it was Dolores, your, your African safari had your giraffe up high up here because it was so dramatic to see him in front of the sun. So let me get my tree just right trying to decide is this where I want it. Now, the nice thing about Schema Scene 2 is you can go like that, and then you can lift it up, and it stays put. Okay, I can see one problem. This tree is supposed to be pretty bent, and I've got that a little... The, the base shouldn't be crooked. The top should be. So let me get this set up. I hate to cover up my beautiful sky. I worked so hard on it. And I've got to be honest, I love this effect. I love it. It looks like a um, log cabin. And then, thank you, Cheryl, stand up and take a bow. Jody, stand up and take a bow. And there was one other person who said, that, who were, were instrumental in helping me decide that, hello, Olivia Carroll. Um, it's actually, yeah, actually, I went back and looked at a uh, filene is, let me, it is sold, filene is sold by Sulky, but I tend to find, it where it's best priced and it's filane and it's by sulky and it is a um brushable um thread that looks like fur and i bought some so i will be showing you so anyway let me see and see, I'm going to take thread painting and, like, put some, you know, something in front of that tree a little bit. I don't know. What do you think, guys? Should I, um, should I move either one of these? I don't want him too close to the tree. Although, I guess he could have been eating some of the leaves. Whoops. He's sticking to me. All right, let me, I got to turn it this way so I can kind of see it. Um, all right. But the other, the other thread that I, you saw me use is called woolly nylon. And there are all kinds of woolly threads now because thread painting is so popular. All right, let's see. I think... I don't want it to cover up too much of the sun, sunset, because I worked really hard on that. It was making me mad. <laughs> Maybe I don't want to put it too close to the edge. I don't know. Okay, what do you think, ladies? You like the giraffe closer to the sun? Yeah, because he can, he can be standing in front of it a little bit, okay? How does this look? Are they too close to even? Eyelash yarn. Yeah, eyelash yarns, 
You can put, I'm going to bring him down a little bit. He was just too matchy with the, um, he was too matchy with the tree. Let me see if I can move the tree over a little bit more. Because I don't know exactly where the edge is going to be. But, all right. What do you think? I think that's better. What do you think? Yeah, he needs to be straight while the tree is leaning. Good point. Y'all yeah, give me that's such good advice. Because th there was one time I put him on, and he was. He was kind of leaning to the side. And I thought, oh, that's not good. All right. I think I've got it now. And ready? I'm ironing it down. That's always a scary moment, isn't it? Because, boy, if you've ever... Treat, yeah, good, okay. If you have ever, ever tried to peel up something that's been fused, ironed down into place, and fully fused. All right, so now let me hold on just a second, please. And oh, thank you. Y'all are so supportive. That means everything. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a good inspiration photo so that I can use my, um, so that I can use my ink tints. And this is always to me a lot of fun because... I can come in, actually, you know what, I'm not going to be able to do too much because I haven't stitched it down, and every time I want to come in and and um, work on it, it lifts it up, but let me see. Yeah, I haven't sewn anything down. So I'm going to have to be pretty careful. Okay, I'm putting a yellow a little bit, just getting that yellow sun. And this will help. What I'm going to be doing is kind of blending the colors in together. And I love this. I love the, the part I love. Whoops. Yeah, I need to stitch this down. I didn't think about that. But um, I love using ink tints, any kind of fabric paints, because it really brings excitement into the piece. And I can, I can make things blend. I can make things stand out. Oops. And I tell you what, save your pencil shavings, because they'll have some of that ink on them. And you can put them in a little bit of water, and then you'll have some little ink that you can do something with. But don't mix them up, because then they'll turn brown. Oh, it's so funny. I was listening to Alex Anderson last night, and evidently someone chastised her for disparaging brown. And it's like, yeah, that, that would be me with orange. But I'm learning to try to like it. All right. But anyway, as you can see, just a little bit of this. Then I might want to come in with a charcoal gray and try to give a little definition to the sky, a little bit of like the underneath of clouds. And... Yeah, I really do need to, I need to have it all done. This is wonderful to get your shadowing in. Like I can come, whoops, let me make sure I'm on camera. I can come in at the bottom of some of these highlights and make sure, like here, give some definition to the edges of the grass. So what I'll do when I work on this during our next two weeks off, 
I'll come back and show you. I'll leave a place to show you. Like, see her right here? We know where the highlight is. Let's give a little definition down here to the bottom. And then when you come in with your fabric medium, whoops. And Lisa, if Lisa's still here, if she would tell us uh, the name again of the fabric medium that she loves best. Because she's got one she really likes. I might not be able to get this medium open. I haven't used it in a while. And unfortunately, no, I can't do it. But I tell you what, I will dip it in a little bit of water. Because we want to have fun. So I'll get my little lid here. Put a little water on that. And find a brush. Now, I normally don't use water because water tends to spread it instead of keeping it right where you draw it. But I want you to be able to see how having ink tints will bring the definition out. And then like right down here where I put some shadowing. And... Right down here. And it's just really, it's really, really nice to be able to add that little bit more to the work. So, hopefully now you can kind of see. All right. And then let me go back and show you this shadowing down here between this one. So, see how it just brings out. And it, depending on how hard you press is how much color you will get if you go over it more than one time. Now let's come up here and see what this is going to look like where I did some of this. But this is where you can really get particular with your work and enjoy putting those the final touches on. Normally I do this after I've done the thread painting. And you can do it before or after you quilt it. But hopefully it just you just see that it gives a chance for some definition to come out. But I can't do enough of this until I get it all stitched down. And I'm going to go ahead, too, and stitch, use this smoky dark and stitch all around the tree. Because I don't trust any of this to stay where it is. So, but I, boy, you do see on this rock how well it works. Now, let's say you want to emphasize the highlight here. Well, watch what this does. Okay, this will bring out, whoops, got to make sure I'm on camera. Oh, let me see. Let me just draw it. Sometimes with the white, it's easier to wet the fabric and just draw it right onto the fabric. But the water is what releases. The water releases the color. Okay. And then let me wet up here and show you up here. Now, ink tents are expensive. I do understand that. So you may have to save for a bit to get those. Oh, and where ink tents will be really good is like in this water to reflect some of that that sunset. In fact, you can see where I had put some yellow here with the ink tents. But now when I come in here, look at this. You could just put that white, really make it pop. It's all about it's all about contrast and the unexpected. So 
there it is. So it just gives that little bit more and the same with all of these. And you can even do it here on the sun itself. And just to really make that look more intense. All right. Well, that is good. Now I think what we're going to do is go look at a couple of your photos. Because I think that y'all sent in some things you've been working on. So let me go check real quickly. But I will come back to this and show you after we take our two weeks off. I'll come back and show you what else I've done. All right, let me turn this off. I'll hold it up one more time just for you to see if there any of this made a difference. Come on, camera. I have to talk really nice to the camera now. All right. So it's getting there. It is getting there. And since I put the tree a little bit far away from the edge, I'm going to come back and add some more to that tree because I'm not sure that is a big enough tree. So I'll bring it out to the edge. All right. So another one bites the dust. <laughs> <laughs> we got we just about finished another one so all right now let me bring you down here turn off the light bring you down oh turn off my machine light i wanted to make sure i got as much done as i could so that i could share with you it mostly done. Right. Here we go. Let's go see who, and I'm sorry, it might, I'm going to have to kind of hunt and peck at, these were my inspiration photos. Let's go back to viewers. Who put in... Hmm, I'm looking, pardon me if I just kind of go through and try to figure out who put in, oh boy, you wait this Sunday, I'm going to share all Carol's things with you, it's wonderful, okay, Charlene did one, look at this, way to go Charlene, that is gorgeous. And you can see how that she did different size blocks and rectangles in the fall background colors with the tree on the front. And the fabric looks like the leaves that are, have fallen off the tree. She did a beautiful job on that. Way to go. All right. Now let me see. And that was Charlene Lawson on that one. Let me see if Debbie did one. She's done some other beautiful art quilts, but I'm not sure she did the background one. If I have missed one, write and tell me or send the picture. Miss Dolores, she didn't do this one, but she gets any excuse possible because she broke her knee. Hello, poor dear lady. Then she had to live through a tornado warning and oh my gosh, so... But isn't that beautiful? Yes, I need to add more to my tree. I can see that now. But watch when, okay, here is her giraffe. Look at this. That's what made me think. Put that head in the sun. And her giraffe is actually nibbling off that tree. Isn't that beautiful? And there's one more African safari. And it's a mama and baby elephant. Look at this. Isn't that wonderful? And she did the confetti colors for the sky. I love it. Beautiful. And I love how she frames them. Because these are works of art. No doubt about it. All right. So let me see who else might have done an art quilt. Now, you know, Miss Jody 
does the best art quilts. Miss Jody, if if you've done anything more to this and you possibly have a moment, I would love another photo. That is just so gorgeous. I just love it. Her work is impeccable. Let me see who else. Kathy Boyd, did she do one? No, but I've got some good things to show you from her this Sunday. Kaplan. Now, these are art quilts. They're not this particular art quilt, but look at these. I love the collage prints. I want to do something like this. Maybe Miss Kathy can inspire us. All right. Who else? Miss Polly. I know she's been working on it. I'm going to show you all of hers because they all qualify as good art quilts. Look at this. She's experimenting with using like a, a glittery um, netting around the sun. She's using beading, trims, burlap. I mean, I'm just so proud of her. She is blossoming as an artist. And I'm so tickled we get to watch. It is just amazing. And she tries something, and if it doesn't quite work, she takes it out and tries again. Just like last, was it last week or the week before, that I pulled all this, the sun rays, the, the horizontal ones, tore them off and said, let's do it again. So, isn't that nice? I love that. Those undulations are perfect. And the quilting that goes in the, in the shape of the undulation is wonderful. Look at all of that. I, I love embellishing work. It is so much fun. All right, that was Miss Polly. Susan Berg, let me see. These are all art quilts. So I'd like to show these to you. I feel like we're so lucky. When I first learned quilting and started quilting back in the late 80s, early 90s, there were so many rules to follow. If someone had brought a beautiful piece of art like this in, the ladies probably would have fainted. They didn't. They wouldn't have known what to do with that. And now we are so lucky. The sky's the limit. Beautiful thread painting there. All right. Let's see if there's any other art quilts while we're looking today. I think that was it for the art quilts. So... Okay, so it's coming along. We're learning. The, the most important thing is we're growing as artists. We're growing, we're exploring, and that's what life's about, you know. And uh, so thank you for joining me for this journey. And we'll take two weeks off, but we'll be back January 6th, I believe. And then we're going to start some, something fun that Miss Lisa Capen inspired us. And, um, and I'm still going to do hers because I can tell her colors are gorgeous. I hope I can get close to that. She includes the actual colors. But I'm going to try to use what I've got here. It's not going to be quite as pretty as hers. But I'll do my very best. Oh, another thing to tell you real quickly. Alex Anderson right now is doing an art quilt along and she's taking satin um, silk Dupionis fabric and she's making a, a, a rather basic wall or basic plan piecing and then she's doing all kinds of stitching with pearl cottons, variegated pearl cottons stitching and embellishing and I looked at that and I told Mark I want to do that well the problem is I want to do leases I want to finish my the quilt block of the thing I just got through doing that and I've got to finish oh wait till you see the two other trees swirly trees I've done so what I did is I went to fabric warehouse i think that's what it's called fabric wholesalers fabric warehouse and i found polyester dupioni for 4.99 a yard so 
they unfortunately some of the colors are sold out so i couldn't get quite the colors i really wanted but hold i think it's fabric wholesalers hold on let me see i know there's never enough time if i didn't have to clean this house i hate cleaning a house so to me what a big waste of time okay let me find it real quick i can tell you exactly the company and if you're wanting to do the Alex Anderson, because all her kits were gone. They were like $79, gone, sold out so fast. So let me see. Fabric Wholesale Direct. Okay. Fabric Wholesale Direct. And I bought polyester dupioni. Looks just like the silk for $4.99 a yard instead of $19.99 a yard. So it's fabric. Oh, whoops. Oh, what? <laughs> now, I can't blame this, this on not having my glasses on. Fabric Holes Sale Direct. Okay. And if you go there, very nice company, and you can get what looks like the Silk Dupionis for a fraction of the price. All right, and when I get them in, I'll show you what I'm going to try to do with them. It's going to be some unusual colors, but I was trying something, and I'm not sure it's going to work. But since that's an art quilt, I wanted to tell you about it. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for joining me. I was telling somebody, pardon me, that lamp is blinding me. I was telling somebody, now it's too dark. I was telling somebody the other day that I don't know how I would have gotten through that. Well, I was going to try to turn my light on there, but I forgot where the button is. Let me try it again and turn there. I had to turn the shade. But uh, I don't know how I would have gotten through these last two years of pandemic and everything else. So thank you so much. Keep art quilting. I'll see you January 6th, Thursday night. And we'll start our next project. And I'll show you how I finish this one. Bye-bye and have a nice holiday. And I'll see you plenty of other times during the holidays. Bye-bye, everybody. Take good care. Keep art quilting. Bye-bye.